Good evening, my name is Elijah Lewis and I am an author and motivational speaker and part of the 100 Authors to Watch in 2025 for the Aspiring Authors Magazine. And I want to tell you a little quick word about my book, Your Jewels Are In Your Journey, Life Lessons to Lead to Your Optimal Self. Uh, this is a great book for anybody looking to find any guidance on how to be their optimal self. Uh, what you learn is that life lessons are jewels, the people that you come in contact with to better yourself are jewels, and that you yourself are a jewel. Because if you don't know who you are, it's hard to know where you're going. So if you'd like to learn more, you can go to my website, www.elijahlewis.org. Follow me on Instagram at Melanie King Eli, LinkedIn at Elijah Lewis, and you can check out my business Facebook page, Your Jewels in Your Journey. Take care, and hope you find many jewels. Good evening, everyone. My name is Cheryl Northern Legrand. I am originally from New New Jersey. I reside in Nida, North Carolina. I have three younger daughters. I am a single parent, and I pray tonight that I say something encouraging to you. I am a motivational speaker. I'm an inspirational speaker. I speak to women all over the world. It doesn't matter the age. It doesn't matter if they're married or single. I also have six books and a journal. I am a co-author of many, and I started poetry this year. And I just want you to know, whatever you're going through, whatever it is, guess what? You let God direct you. This book right here is my favorite, Life Behind Cancer. Trust the process because he turned my fear to faith. He turned my cries to courage. He turned my struggle to my strength. And it can happen to you. So to every sure out there, I want you to know that all things are possible. To every sure out there, let God direct you. Pick up that pen. Pick up that pencil. And let him use you. Because we all have a story inside of us. We are almost at another year. So what are you going to do? And guess what? We can do it together. It all depends on you. Greetings. I am Dr. Kimberly Thomas. I am an author, a poetess, and an affirmed apostle in the Lord's Church. I have stopped by to introduce one of my notable literary works, Free from Broken Beginnings, Healing Every Lifeless Place. This is not just a snapshot of my tattered past, but this is a testament of the transformative power of God. Through my transparency, I am able to offer hope to women who are in the struggle, the struggle of breaking their silence, the struggle of being freed from the captivity of their past pains, hurts, and abuse. Let's connect. Find me on Facebook at Kimberly.Thomas.58367. This is the brother man, Wendell Fields, coming from you from the state of Georgia. And hey, I'm one of the 100 authors that's coming out in 2025 with a new thing. Can you dig that? Oh, yeah. But can you dig this? Hey, man, right here. Hey, the Titus 2 principle. Hey, we want to reach, we want to teach, and we want to lead. Hey. It's on Amazon.com, bestseller. Not only that, ladies and gentlemen, but hey, the brother man got another one. It is. There's no health without mental health, men and mental health. Let's talk about it. Oh, I want to meet you. I want to greet you. Reach me at Wendell underscore Fields at Yahoo.com or www. Oh. WendellFields.com. Hi, I'm No More Tears. I wanted to talk about my book today. My book is about rape and molestation and how I overcame it. Yes, I had to go through therapy. Yes, I had to go through prayer. Yes, I had to set myself apart. Yes, I had to get counseling. Yes, I had to cry. Yes, I had to go through oppression and depression behind it. But today, I can say I'm healed from all of it. I had to forgive others. I had to forgive myself from the pain, from the hurt, or whatever I went through. My book was my release. My book was my healing. But through my healing, I had resources. I had medication. I had psychiatrists. I had trauma therapy. I had most of everything that I need. But the most of all, I had to spend time with myself to find myself, to get back to myself because I had lost myself. So order my book today. Hi. Winning book, The Adventures of Joni and Juliet. Have you ever gone on a trip 
Well, hang on to your slippers and get ready for an unforgettable journey to Italy with siblings Joni and Juliet. This delightful story not only takes you on an exciting adventure through Italy, but it also instills a love for travel and discovery. Despite their initial reluctance to go to bed, as soon as Joni and Juliet slip on their cozy flannel pajamas, they are transported to the heart of Italy, where they explore the wonders of this beautiful country. Join Joni and Juliet in their thrilling adventures and let this book inspire a lifelong love of travel and explore winning book, The Ad Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. I want to thank you guys for joining in on tonight. We're in for another episode. I tell you, I get excited every chance I get to come on. Um, I am going to be filling in tonight for um, Prophetess Simone Williams Young. Um, I'm not sure if you guys know um, what she is currently going through, but um, she was diagnosed with a brain tumor she had um, brain surgery um and over the holidays um she suffered a couple seizures so she's been dealing with a lot but yet but god y'all if you see this young lady is yet present she's yet standing she's yet um still being a, a, a miracle um walking living testimony of the power of god um so i definitely um am standing in for her tonight um letting her know that um here on the crew podcast that we always have your back um y'all know she is a um prophetess she's a woman of god um so i'm definitely going to share something um <clears throat> That has to do with the word. Of course, y'all know I am a um, a, a woman of God too. I don't have a, a office, a, an official office, or walking official um, office, but um, I am a true woman of God. I believe in the word, and I try to apply it to everything that I do. Um, yeah, I'm excited because not only tonight, I actually have a um, special guest on with me. Of course, I y'all know um, I, I have Shanette's co-host on with me tonight um he had called earlier and i said you know what um call back and um i'm gonna do a show and you can come on um got a lot to talk about um tonight i'm actually going to be live on the wbnn so i want to encourage you guys to come on over there tonight tune in press that um star two join the conversation we're gonna have one of our very own Dr. Chinchira is going to be over there on the WBNN with me. Y'all going to get an opportunity to get up close and personal with her, get to know a little bit about her. So I encourage you guys to come on over to the WBNN and join us, y'all. We're going to be sharing some poetry because, of course, she's a poet. Um, my second guest, uh, too, um, he is a poet as well, Dr. Carey um, um bracket um he's going to be in the building he is actually one of the 2025 um poets of the year nominees um he's going to be in the building um tonight so i want to encourage you guys to come on over um and we're going to be talking about the poetry book footprints in the sands of time y'all we're going to have the opportunity to share i got me some today i may even give away a copy I may even give away a copy. So you have to be live on air with us tonight to get a free copy, y'all. This is a nice book. I had, um, y'all, normally I don't critique my books and go through them like that. Um, Cornell is actually um, in this book. Um, he is in this book, giving him an opportunity to share. But y'all, before I jump on in, I'm going to um, say a prayer. And then I am going to um, 
um, bring my guests on in, and then we're going to jump in the conversation wherever it leads us. It leads us because y'all, I don't have an outline for the program. I just said that I would cover her shows for her in her absence just to let her know that, you know, we support her, that we love her, and we're there for her, and we're yet praying for her. I call her name out every morning over there on the prayer list. So I'm trusting and believing God is going to move and do exactly what he said he would do for us. So um, with that being said, I'm going to lead us in prayer, and then the next voice you hear will be that. Uh, Mr. Cornell, he's going to introduce himself and say hello to y'all, and then we're going to get started in the conversation. Okay, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for yet another day, Lord God. I thank you for this day that was not promised us, Lord God, a day that we get an opportunity to 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 impact lives, to do something that we didn't do on yesterday, Lord, because you extended your grace and your mercy because somebody didn't get this chance. Somebody died with dreams. Somebody died with hope. Somebody died with aspirations within them, Lord God. They didn't get to do the things that you had called and purposed them to do. But Lord, you gave us this opportunity to do that. You gave us this opportunity to be here. You gave us this opportunity to do just what we're doing. And I thank you. I thank you for just being who you are in our lives. So, um, Father, I ask that you will have your way on tonight, Lord God. Move me out of the way, Lord God, and allow your spirit man to rise up, not on just on this show, but on the show that I'm going to do tonight at 930 over on the WBNN, Lord. Just use me for your glory, Lord God. Father, I thank you in your son Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't know what happened, but it looked like um, during the prayer, um, Cornell got disconnected. So hopefully he will call back in. But nevertheless, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm grateful because a lot of us don't get an opportunity to do some of the things that we want to do in this life. But God has given me an opportunity to do a lot of things. Um, I've had an opportunity to work with people incarcerated. I've had an opportunity to, to, to publish books, an opportunity to give other people, y'all, 30 people in this book, see, 30 people inside of this book, give other people an opportunity to share their thoughts, their perspective, a little bit about themselves in the way that they want to do it. So I'm just glad to be a vessel. I thank God. I thank him for thinking enough of me because let me tell you, I ain't always been on the straight and narrow. And and even now, you know, I I, I I'm not perfect. I, I I have my faults. I have my my errors. I I I can be a little bossy. I can be a little demanding because guess what? God has given me a, a spirit to deceive stuff and and to see people and to see gifts in people and when i see a gift in you i'm gonna pull it out and i may be pushing you to do stuff that you normally may not do that you normally may not do and it may be outside of your box but trust me i i i i, I don't mean no harm and i i just want the best for everyone i i feel like if you come in my midst that there's a reason why God placed us together because I don't believe that he make mistakes. I, I, I believe that there's a reason why he bring you in, in my circle, in my network. You know, I, I don't believe that he would just bring you there for us to, you know, not be productive for the kingdom. I believe that it's something for the kingdom. But welcome back, Cornell. I don't know what happened, but um, you got disconnected um, during the prayer. But welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Um, I, I was just sharing um, with those um, just a little bit, just just dropping a little nuggets. Um, Shanette said that she missed your call earlier. She said to call her whenever um, you you could. Um, so um, just wanted to let you know that. But um, I was sharing uh, just a little bit about, I don't know, just me, um, about being a voice, being an outlet, um, allowing your voice to speak. I, I For the first time, I am like at awe and just happy at something that I've done. Like I'm looking at this book and I see my books all the time and I don't think about it. You know, I'm, I'm just like, just, I just want to be a vessel to be used and seeing this makes me want to be a vessel to be used to even more because when you can see your work in your hand and you can see the, I mean, you would think somebody else did this. Like you see, I'm like, but you did that. 
And I'm just like, okay, I'm at awe. And I'm grateful for everyone that not thought it not robbery to be a part of these projects. Um, tonight, we're actually going to be sharing some of the poetry, um, Cornell, on um, my other show um, on the WBNN tonight. I have Dr. Chen, um, who is a host here at Oz Speaks. Um, she's on first and third Thursday, so y'all got to check her out. Y'all come check her out tonight, and then y'all come back and check. If y'all have not been checking her out, y'all got to come back and check her out right here on the WBNN on first and third thursdays um she be bringing some people on here y'all she she's over in the virgin islands she lives in the virgin islands she's a professor she teaches at the university of the virgin islands she is a historian i mean she loves history she loves to inform people about you know things that happened before our time you know she's very informative um she is a very enlightened person and um, I tell you, I, I, I love watching her shows. I, I love catching her lives. I, I just love being in her midst. Um, so y'all check her out. Again, I'm just shouting everybody out, just getting a chance to just be who I am. But anyway, y'all, we got Cornell here. And um, y'all that have been following and support Shanette and um, have followed me for a while know that Cornell is one of the individuals that we work with. Um, inside of tdcj um the state of texas he's been very in instrumental in a lot of the things that shanette has done i have done um like he is like everything that i've done inside of tdcj would not have been possible without him um so i'm grateful when i tell y'all y'all don't believe i prayed for shanette um, she don't believe she believed that she prayed for me and that I was a we was a helpmate to each other because I, I needed her because I, I, I needed a voice for those that were incarcerated, not just in Texas, but all over. And I knew that I could not do it with all that I had going on. So I'm grateful for her. And when I tell you she's been doing an amazing job, she has been doing an amazing job. And I am so, so proud of her. Um, again, Cornell, thank you um, for letting me ravel on 18 minutes of raveling. Um, thank you um, for being here um, tonight and um, sharing. So what we are going to talk about um, Tonight, I'm just I, I'm just really grateful, and I just want to really pass on that spirit of gratitude. Um, you have had the opportunity. We were talking about poetry. We lost an amazing poet, um, Dr. Nikki Giovanni, and um, we're actually going to be honoring her tonight on um, the WBNN. I am going to be honoring her over on Walking in Purpose with Angela. I have two guests tonight, but. Um, what have how has you utilized writing and books and different things um into your life um and into your rehabilitation and how can you share with someone else because um we we keep having to tell the people and i want you to before we jump in um briefly um you ain't got to give them the whole spiel because they should know who you are by now um just briefly tell them who you are and then um, make sure you include um, your current situation. Okay. My name is Cornel Drummer. I'm a Texas prison inmate of 34 years. And I'm here for a murder case and a drug case that was ran back. And uh, I'm serving a sentence of 154 years. Okay, I've been incarcerated, like I say, for 34 years. And since my confinement, matter of fact, since growing up in life, I never realized how important education was. But growing up, our parents used to always teach us about go to school, tell us to go to school, get your education, get your education. And me as a product of the poor environment of the neighborhood, of coming up in the low developing homes and stuff like that, I was around nothing but drugs and negativity, one eye and, you know, the negative parts of life. So with that being said, I, I can practically indicated I became a product of my environment. And as I got up I started, you know, to commit crimes. And when I started to commit crimes and stuff, it started to have an impact on my life and took me down a negative road. Well, coming into the prison system, you know, I never realized that, you know, I would have 
have to, you know, find myself. Because if not, I would find myself at the bottom all the time, not utilizing the skills and abilities that I had in life. So with this being said, you know, coming in and out of prison, I learned a lot. You know, I taught myself. I had to teach myself how to read. I had to teach myself how to write, how to, you know, add, multiply, and subtract. Well, this time I have 154 years. And God spoke to me one time. And he said, Mr. Drum, I'm going to do something for you. I'm going to give you something, and I want you to do one thing for me. I want you to bring everybody with you. And I didn't understand what that meant. But what he was telling me is that he's going to give me a voice. To be a voice for somebody. To be able to help people come up out of a rut. Well, with that being said, he gave me the skills that I need to learn the legal system. And when I learned the legal system, I started, you know, realizing what he meant by telling me that I would be a voice. Well, I never realized how important that was, you know, to a lot of people, but I kept doing it, I kept doing it. And then I ended up meeting Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Thomas, and she's a poet. She's a book writer. And with that being said, I never realized how important a poem could be to a lot of people, how a poem could change the life of a lot of people. And with that being said, I started realizing that a poem, a book, a letter, a short story could change the lives of a lot of people. The meaning is them. And when she did, I got more and more interested in it. So I started becoming a, a, a partner with her. And I started taking her books and giving her her magazines and I started looking at them. And they were so important and so powerful, I started taking a liking to them. So I started showing them to everybody in the prison system. And people were so amazed about the fact that these poems and these books and these magazines and stuff were so powerful that they wanted to be a part of this operation, the group podcast. So with that being said, I connected with, with Mrs. Thomas, and she started registering and hooking these individuals up and started sharing her stuff with them. And like I say, a poem is a very important factor in a lot of people's lives. It's like a book is. And now with that being said, I've learned a lot. And I became a part of her program. The same as with Mrs. Jeanette. Mrs. Jeanette Johnson. She's a very powerful individual. And I inspire her and she inspired me to be a voice for those who are in need of a voice. So that's why I can say today that, you know, I'm glad to be a part of this program. Uh, let's talk about it. And come um, next year we will be doing uh, Stand for Justice. Because if we can't stand together for something, we stand together wrong for nothing. But that's where I would be at. Wow. And I, I, I'm just, sometimes I, I, I find myself wondering how and where do you find the strength? Because you, it's not like you actually did a crime. You were wrongfully incarcerated, and yet you have found a way to press past that you you found a way to get over it yet we have people on the outside that will get mad at you for just asking them you to communicate or just asking for something or simply stepping on the shoe or just the simple things the things that we take for granted i i have realized that a lot of those that have been wrongfully incarcerated have embraced and they've utilized. It's like we read the word, but we don't apply it to our lives. But it's like when you're put in a place, in a position where you have to take that word and apply it to your life, and then it becomes life and you begin to see it work. Like, I, I want you to share with that person that may be tuned in live or may hear this as a replay. How have you turn those lemons into lemonade and not that sour puss lemonade but some sweet savoring lemonade that is that is that that is mouth watering to your thirst okay ma'am well, the word of god said i stand for you who can stand against you so with that being said that gave me a new strength of standing on my own two feet to find my way and as I started trying to find my way, ma'am, I started, you know, learning how to be a more productive individual here in this prison system. I started getting up. I started going to church.
church. I started, you know, becoming doing one on ones and started learning more about God. Because without God in my life, I knew one thing, I could not do it. So I had to find the word of God and put God on everything that I did. Because through that, I got the strength. I got the wisdom. I got the knowledge. And I got the, 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 the ability to do what I do today. And no matter, don't nobody else want to do it. If don't nobody else want to get involved. God told me one thing. Continue to do what you do. And one day, you will see that I am showing favor on you to succeed in everything that I have commanded it for you to do. And that's what I do every day. I wake up trying to find a way to be a boy, trying to find a way to connect the dots, trying to find a way to reform our broken criminal justice system. It's not easy. It's people who are committing suicide now because they can't take it anymore. So I always wake up every day trying to find a way to be that boy, to give that hope. To let these people know one day it's going to be all right. One day the doors are going to open. So if I can get to the other side now, believe me, I'm going to stand up and I'm going to be that voice and that advocate for criminal justice reform, mental health reform, depression, for everything that I can be a voice for. That's what I'm going to do, man. Wow. I mean, that's that's amazing. Um, I mean, it truly is. Um, I listened to Jerry's show last night on the WBNN. Of course, she um, is the host over on the network that I'm on. And she was sharing um, a guy on there last night. I think he's someone that um, Dr. Um, Chinchilla's been working with. Um, of course, everybody that know um, Chinchilla knows that she works with um, social the injustice, um, wrongfully overly incarcerated um, individuals. And this is a guy that's been incarcerated. I think he's been incarcerated since he was a teenager. I, I don't know where he is. Um, I, they didn't disclose that on last night, but he's now 44 years old. He's now a, um, a um, licensed minister. Um, he's gotten so many degrees. Um, they are now giving individuals, I don't know if all of facilities are doing it, but I've seen a couple facilities um, within the prison system. They are allowing these individuals that are excelling in school and doing these different things um, that have shown that they are rehabilitated. They are giving them opportunity to speak before classes um, and stuff. And, and they're able to use that um, when they go up for parole. So now, I, before I um, share a piece of poetry that you wrote in this book, um, I, I want you to share because um, in sharing that, um, I brought up a subject um, that I know is near and dear to your heart and that is your current status. Um, for those that follow know that Cornell was paroled in August. Um, he was granted parole, but yet he still sits behind prison walls. He was granted a FI, um, was it the FI-6? Yes, ma'am, FI-6. So right. he was granted an FI-6. Um, so with that FI-6, he was required to attend a program. Um, it is now December. He was supposed to be at his program, started his program, and now should be two months into his program. And yet he's yet to leave the facility. Um, with that FI6, that meant that he's supposed to do a six-month program, and then he was supposed to be released. Um, we're now two, two months over um, his time that he's supposed to be doing the program. And this is what we're finding in a lot of the Texas facilities, um, not just Texas, but we're finding it in a lot of facilities. But it is really bad in Texas. And those commissioners have taken a personal vendetta against some of these inmates and really made it personal. I mean, they really made it personal to where they are holding their records and then they are holding um, their verdicts and stuff until the last day. Um, and then they're pushing them and holding them on when they get to these programs, because remind you, now the program time does not start until you get to the program. So you got to get to the program first. So if they hold you six months before they get you to the program, and then you go over to the program, you got to do another six months. That's already another year added onto your time. 
Well, some of these people have already served over 20 years. Now, where is the fairness of that? Now, we all know back in the day, a life sentence, when they used to give out these life charges and these life sentences, we know when they used to give out those, that was like people did 25, 30 years and they was home. Now, you doing 40, 50 years before these people even want to bring you up for a, a parole. And then they want to play with you once they bring you up for parole. Where is the fairness? Where is the, we trying to really get these people back out into society and allow them to function? Where, where is that? It is not there because it's all about the money. And, and we got to move from that. We, we got to understand that we got to get back to values. And we got to, we got, we, y'all, if you have family members that are incarcerated, I don't care if they're your cousin, your brother, your nephew, your fifth cousin, if they way down the line. If you have family members that are in prison, you should be writing people. You should be standing up for them. When you see stuff going on that shouldn't be going on, you should be saying something. Whether you reach out personally or if you reach out as an advocate, you should be advocating about these things. See, I can't sit down and be quiet because I have family members that's incarcerated. I have a nephew that's incarcerated. So I can't sit down and be quiet. I may not be directly affecting his case, but I can't sit down and be quiet when I know that he's he's part of what is going on in America. And that it need to be addressed. So I speak. I may not be all I may not be doing all that Shanette is doing. Because I don't have the time for I'm, 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 y'all, if I did, I'm telling you, I would. I, I tried, but I just, I, I can't. And 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 I'm, I'm grateful for people like Shanette. Uh, even though I can't do what she's doing, I'm still able to sit and, and brainstorm with her. And we're able to toss things off of each other. And we're able to talk about things. And we're able to share. And we're able to, you know, I, I can be in the background and, and, and help her with whatever it is it's needed to, to go for. You know, that that's what collaboration and coming together and working together is all about. Like, all eight of these hosts over here know I got their back. No matter what they need, I'm I'm, I'm there. If, if, if you need a guest, I'm there. If you need me to help you with a guest, I can help you get a guest. If you need whatever you need, I'm, I'm there. And if I can't, guarantee you, I know somebody that can and I'm going to hook you up with them. That's one thing about me. I can't take none of this nowhere with me. So guess what? I, I want to leave it so that other people can be able to carry on. Because guess what? Life going to go on without me. Life going to go on without all of us. But we need to make sure that the ones that are coming behind us, that they are equipped with the things that they need, that they may go forth and that they may be great. Because there may be some things that we may not be able to tap into just yet. That we may be setting the, the 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 frequency and the flow for them to walk into. But if we don't show up, guess what? We'll never know. So a lot of us we want to make excuses, but like my big brother O say, there's no excuses. Excuses are for the incompetent, and I don't deal with incompetent people, so I know that. That's not us over here. We don't make excuses. If we can't, we're going to tell you we can't. We're not going to try to do more than what we can. But we always, one thing we're going to do over here is we're going to communicate with you and we don't do nothing else. That's one thing about me. I'm going to communicate with you if I don't do nothing else. I may not show up, but I'm going to communicate and you're going to know why I ain't showing up. And I may have somebody showing up for me. Or whatever the case may be. But Cornell, I want to share with those that are listening um, one of your um, pieces that you wrote inside of um, Footprints in the Sands of Time. Um, what, what is it like trying to create a legacy being in the current situation that you're in? What does that look like for you? And what would you 
say to someone that may be in the same situation that you're in that may have given up? Now, now that's a very good question, ma'am. Okay. When you open your eyes to see what the real problem is here in this country, ma'am, you will realize, ma'am, that, you know, our country has founded it on slavery. You know, and because of that, ma'am, our institutions are capitalizing on slavery. So with that being said, ma'am, the truth is the truth. We can't add nothing to it and we can't take nothing away from it. So with that being said, ma'am, within these institutions, ma'am, you know, it's hard trying to get relief from our criminal justice system. Why? Because of that myth right there. That our country has founded it on racism and slavery and, and, and capitalism. And, and this is a multi trillion dollar enterprise right here, incarceration. We have 2.2 million people incarcerated in the United States. We have 70 million people that's on parole, probation, or incarcerated, man. These are some very staggering numbers. So when it comes time, man, to try to challenge a criminal justice system that's broken like this, without our state representatives, our Texas senators, and our governors, and our president, or whoever else in office trying to fix these problems, man, it's hard. And people are willing to, you know, they fight, but it's hard. And so they be choosing to give up. They stop because you can't win. The criminal justice system right now, our parole board is bound by the judicial branch of government. Which means that we are now governed by an individual, not the system. My commissioner right now has recommended to me an FI6R program. Now, mind yourself, this same individual thing he five years ago. After doing 28 years. And since that time, I have completed every program within the system three times. So when he saw me this time, he said, Mr. Bill, tell me why I should let you go. I said, Well, my credential speaks for themselves. I have completed every program three times college courses and everything. He said, Well, okay, Mr. Bill, I can agree with you on that. So when I got my answer, it's the FIR6. So I'm like, Well, wait a minute. You can't get to the program and complete the program until you get to the facility. But you got thousands of inmates waiting to go to the facility. <laughs> so with that being said, that is a complete whole total another set off. After he just gave me five years worth of set off, man. So now the problem is this. Our system is so broken because our, re- our legislators are not recognizing these problems within our system. Our parole board systems are using these FBI projects to be able to deny these people parole, to re- deny releasing these people into society where they can become productive people in society, man. If they released all of the people that's already the main parole, man, this system would be empty. But they're not well, doing that. Well, of course, they're not going to do that. Because if they do, if you said, like you say, if they release all those people according then it will be empty. And then if it's empty, then they, there's no more free labor. They're, they're just, they, they, they can't charge for the beds being full. So they know what they're doing. They, they know exactly what they're doing. We're just going to continue to pray. Um, it, 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 it could get worse because we, we're talking about, you, you're talking about uh, a president that's going to get in office and talk about deport deporting everybody he even talking about deporting u.s citizens and i'm talking about how is you talking about deporting u.s citizens i mean the man really already don't lost his mind and he ain't even in office yet but this is who we this this is who we voted for and i'm gonna say we because we are the people and we got to stand together so we we are one we are one regardless of how 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 we voted we are one so since this is who we as a majority say that we wanted in office, this is who we got. So now this man talking about deporting people that was not born here. So all those um, different people that were born in different countries, even though you've been here a long time and you may have your citizenship, he's still talking about deporting you. But this is the man that you want in office because you say, oh, we 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 struggle with education. We struggle with this. I, I, I listen to a lot of these people say a lot of the reason why they voted for this man but this is what this is this this is what we want um it is crazy but i i want to end on a note um of sharing some poetry um since we are honoring um the late dr nikki giovanni um we had a poetry book 
um, that um, Cornell took part in, How Footprints in the Sands of Time. Um, it is part of the Legacy Chronicle, A Journey Through Time and Eternity. Um, inside of this book, there was 30 individuals that shared in this book. If y'all have not checked this book out on Amazon, um, go check it out. It's on Amazon. It's on Mac. Um, I think it's on Mad Cloud. It's on. Um, it's in most retail places that you can get books from. Um, and then it may be in your local library because um, we are in a lot of the library systems as well. So um, check it out. Check it out. I'm going to read this poem that Cornell wrote. It's called Echoes um, of the Forgotten. In the sands of time, footprints tell a, a tale of a man roamed, trapped in a 34-year jail. August 24th, 2024, finally set free, but the shadows of the past still cling to thee. Memories of your youth, not distant and far, regrets, mistakes, like a relentless scar, nostalgically, for days gone by, lost in abyss. Reflections on life, opportunities missed, time marches on, relentless and cruel, leaving behind fragments of a broken old fool. But in these shadows, there lies a glimmering of hope, a chance to rebuild, to learn how to cope. Through the darkness, a light start to shine, a beacon of redemption, a chance to realign. Footprints in the sands, washed away by the sea, a symbol of rebirth. Of a man now free. Though the past may haunt and the memories may sting, there's a chance for a new beginning. In the shadows of past, a story's untold of a man who rises strong and bold. And that's that piece. That was written by Cornell, y'all. It's called The Echoes of the Forgotten. Cornell, Jackie Drummer. So Cornell, that piece. When 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 individuals ask you um, to write, what what was your thoughts when you were asked to to share inside of this poetry book? Well, man, I was very inspired, man. You know, I was very inspired and you know encouraged through you know working with you and listening to you and just being around you and being a part of the Poop the Poop podcast and. You know, it brought a lot out of me. It gave me the 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 the, the, the knowledge you know, that, that I have a voice, that my voice is powerful, and that I want to be a part of anything that has to do with positivity in this world, man. Because I too want to be the change that I desire to see in this world. Wow. And that means that if we can stand together for something, we stand alone for nothing. So please join us on. Let's talk about it. Thank you very much, ma'am, for having me on your show. Well, thank you for always your willingness to um come on. I know your time is almost over. So thank you. Again, y'all, if y'all can, I want y'all to join me tonight on the WBNN. Um, y'all know every chance I get to come on here, I'm going to come on here. Um, again, y'all send some prayers, some love, some hugs up to um, our queen sister, um, Simone. Um, as she's going through. Of course, she will be back season three. Um, we'll kick out February. Um, right now, I just want her to relax. I just want her to, you know, go through her therapy, go through her new norm, because this is a new norm. Um, adjusting, um, adjusting to things that happen, you know, us just being able to adjust and move on. Um, that's, that's what it's all about. So y'all send out much prayers, love and, and hugs to, um, Simone. Um, remember those that are going through, um, grief because grief during the holidays can be something else. Um, remember those that have lost loved ones, um, during this holiday season, because it's not easy. Um, and remember to check on your family. Um, those that, that, that you think are strong check on them especially check on them um those are the ones that you need to check on during the holiday time because y'all if they've been strong all year long for everybody else and then during the holiday time they may need somebody to be strong for them since they've been strong for everybody else so y'all check on your loved ones 
And if y'all can join me tonight over on the WBNN, let me see if I can um pull this this flyer up so y'all can see um where we're gonna be at. Um, I have um actually I have two hosts um two guests that are gonna be on tonight. Um, Dr. Chen is gonna be one of my guests, and then again I have um the poet um the one of the poet nominees for twenty. 25 he's gonna be on um his name is carrie brackett um he's also a professor he's also a poet so they're gonna be on sharing um they their works they're gonna be talking about their brands they're gonna be talking about their school of course um this is the flyer with the information on it y'all so y'all can see the information but um the calling information i'm trying to enlarge it so y'all can see the calling information don't worry about everything else just the calling information is what i want y'all to look at so i'm gonna put it up i'm gonna be down in this in in the, in the corner so y'all not gonna see me but y'all gonna see the information so y'all can call in tonight and support me um on the wbnn over there so y'all, if y'all can, um, again, I am going to be live on WBNN tonight at 9.30 p.m. Um, I have Dr. Chen, who is one of the hosts here. She hosts the show called Ask Speak. Um, and she's going to be on tonight. And then I have um, one of the nominees for Poet of the Year, Dr. Kerry Brackett. He's going to be on tonight. So we're going to be... Um, talking about um being intentional being intentional about your purpose um for 25 2025 and not allowing your flame to burn out so as educators and as teachers and as um, mentors and leaders um we definitely want their input we definitely want them to share so um this is a great topic for tonight so y'all great topic for going into 2025 y'all we only got a couple of more days y'all this time time is winding down we have what 19 more days in this year and this year is over. We have 19 more days, I think. 19 or 20 more days. I think we got 20 more days. We got 20 more days. And then this year is over with. So, y'all, I'll see y'all tonight. Make sure you call in 717-734-6904. And then, you know, you got to press the access code. It's going to ask you for the access code. It's going to be 533-4929. Make sure you press pound. And then to enter the studio, you got to press one pound. And then if you want to jump on and talk to me, press star two. So make sure you call in, join in on the conversation and enjoy some poetry because we're going to share some poetry. And if you got some poetry, this is your opportunity to share it live on air. You get to share it to over 30 million listeners and you get to shout out your brand. So when we open up the lines for conversation, y'all make sure you press star two so you can join us live. If you got a piece of poetry, bring your poetry so we can honor Dr. Nikki Giovanni for all that she's done and for leading the way. For poets like us, y'all, some of us that probably never thought we had a voice or, or thought we could use our words to, to, to speak. So thank you, Dr. Nikki Giovanni. Your legacy live on, and we're going to make you proud. So y'all, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all, and I'll see y'all tonight. See y'all tonight, okay? <laughs>